Hi, it's Elizabeth with the Weekly Tasting. Thanks so much for getting this New World Reds pack. Now, the New World is everywhere that makes wine that's not Europe or the Middle East. Some people also throw China into the Old World, but it's places like North and South America, Argentina, New Zealand, South Africa, you get the drift. The fact of the matter is these places make really juicy, fruit forward, decadent, hedonistic wines because they tend to be sunny. They tend to be a little bit closer to the equator and not have the weather issues that you'll find in the old world. They're just easy to love wines. And frankly, this pack is gonna live up to the reputation of New World wines, but have a little bit of a twist. We have four wines here that exhibit that sun-kissed, beautiful fruit, a very fruit forward, juicy style. Each is an example of how wines from these regions should taste when done right. The winemakers in each of these cases have taken care to make sure that the land and the fruit shine through. Four wines, we have two Cabernet Sauvignons, one from Argentina, which I didn't used to like Argentinian Cab, but this one is so fresh. Huge contrast of really awesome fruit, great acidity, a bigger style from Chile with lots of mint and graphite, almost like a number two pencil with great fruit, heavier tannins and acidity. A wine from California, the Pinot Noir, which is from a cooler area in Santa Barbara County. Really great varietal example of Pinot with lots of berry notes, some earth, and a really lovely long finish. And finally, a Syrah. This wine is a Syrah from Australia. You did not hear me wrong. It's not Shiraz. They call it Syrah to indicate that it's a little bit more restrained, a little pulled back, a different style for Australia. All four of these wines are fabulous. They're decadent. This is gonna be such a fun pack to taste. So let's get going. This wine is a Henry's Drive Syrah. It's from Pathway in South Australia. And Pathway is a small region. It actually means good water in the local dialect. And it's got a Mediterranean climate, red terra rosa soils, which means that sometimes you're gonna get that essence in the wine. Not a whole lot of producers here, but some really great ones. This is really part of this Australian comeback story. You know, imports for a long time now have been either really low end stuff or super high end, and it's all been jammy fruit bombs. But there's a new way of coming in, which is why I've included this in the pack. The wines are more land driven, they're subtler than fruit bombs. This is a great example of a balanced Syrah with a lighter touch than a lot of Australian Shiraz, which is why this wine is called Syrah. Now the woman who makes this wine, who I've had the pleasure of meeting, makes a Shiraz, also a Henry's Drive Shiraz. But she calls this Syrah because she has really dialed back on the fruit, she has dialed back on you know the 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 overt chocolatey you know big style that you'll find oftentimes in Australian Shiraz. So she's called it Syrah as an indication of that. Let's take a look at this wine. It's really a super dark color. Look, the climate is pretty hot. The weather is very warm. So you're going to get dark colors. This is a purple black in the center. It kind of fans out to a brownish or ruby color. Thick legs, 14% alcohol, so you wanna give this, or 14.5% alcohol. You're gonna give this a nice little swirl here. You'll see the legs dripping down slowly. Give it a sniff. So already, you don't smell the things you smell in a traditional Shiraz. You've got rhubarb, you've got a lot of light and dark flowers. If you've ever had a Beaujolais, this wine kind of is reminiscent of that. Beaujolais from, from Southern Burgundy blueberries, baked cherry pie, all of that is in here. Let's take a sip. Mm. And it tastes a lot like what it smells. It's this combination of fruit and flowers. That rhubarb is pretty strong, medium tannin and acidity. It doesn't feel cloying or too heavy or too fruity. The alcohol does not burn going down. Everything is in balance with this wine. Now I would decant this for a while it tastes much better after it's had a chance to open up, so just keep that in mind. Don't have it with food that's too spicy. Stick with things like grilled or roasted beef with peppercorn. You can have it with hard cheeses like cheddar, grilled or roasted vegetables, vegetarian or beef chili. All of that will go well. Just make sure the chili's not too hot or you'll have a five alarm fire in your mouth from the alcohol and spice going together. A fantastic wine, the Australian comeback story in a glass. 
This wine is the Coil Grand Reserva Cabernet Sauvignon 2012. It's from Chile, it's called Chagua Valley, which is known as the Valley of Small Lakes in the local indigenous dialect. This is such a perfect place for viticulture. It's in the foothills of the Andes Mountains, so you have really great sun exposure beating down on the grapes to get them super ripe, but they're not getting overripe because there's great cooling breezes coming off the Pacific, coming off the mountains, there's snow melt coming off the Andes, so you've got lovely irrigation, you don't have to worry about any of that, and the terroir really comes through. This is just optimal for viticulture. The vineyards here are farmed biodynamically. The notes tell you what that is. That's a good thing. Their grapes are hand harvested. This wine is really made to show off the terroir of the area. 85% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Cab Franc, and 5% Petit Bordeaux. And I'm gonna show you that, again, that sun exposure, you really see the dark color because of the pigment that develops in these grapes because of all that sun, dark ruby and color. The legs are kind of thick, it's 14% alcohol. Give it a swirl and a sniff. It smells like a number two pencil, frankly. <laughs> That's the first thing I get. So some graphite. There's a ton of ripe black fruit, blackberry, black cherry, all of that kind of stuff. Sauteed thyme or some sort of herb, black pepper, and then there's some green pepper, which is very typical of Chilean cab. So let's taste it. And what you're gonna get here is a lot of dark fruit. Again, pencil notes, it tastes like what it smells like. It's got that herb note, black pepper. But then, there's a decaying leaf earth note. Some of that is the terroir, some of that is from that Cabernet Franc, which really exhibits that note. Really delicious texture. Mouth drying tannin is there. Nice, fresh acidity underneath your tongue will be watering to keep it bright. More medium bodied than heavy bodied. It's usually Chilean Cab is sort of between a Napa Cab and a Bordeaux, and this is a perfect example of that, which is why I'm showing this to you in this pack. Also for you Napa Cab lovers, a great alternative for a lot less money. Have this with filet, with hamburgers, with mushroom-based pastas or roasted and charred vegetables. It's a fantastic wine, and what a value for what it is. This wine is the J. Wilkes Pinot Noir from Santa Maria Valley in Santa Barbara County in Central California. Now, I am so excited to have found this wine because it is so hard to find a great quality Pinot that's of value, and we finally were able to locate one. This grape is originally from Burgundy, France. Pinot is known as the heartbreak grape to growers. It is so susceptible to pests and to disease. It's very picky about climate and soil, all of those kinds of things. And there's just so much Pinot out there that's below $20, that has no character, or that's blended in with other things, and that is not the case with this. Wes Hagen, who is the winemaker for this wine, was voted one of the most influential winemakers in the United States, and it's clear why. He does such a great job with this cool climate varietal. And so we're gonna look at the wine and see why that is. Look, this is a perfect example of a Pinot Noir. It is really light in color. It's transparent. You can see your fingers through it. You can read through it if you so desire. It's a little bit brownish and it's a raspberry kind of, uh, you know, uh, reddish color. And let's give it a swirl and a sniff. Now here's the thing about this wine. It is not strongly aromatic. It's got some tea, it has some raspberry notes, it has a little bit of earth, but the real action is on the palate. So let's taste it. Mm. So delicious. So you get a lot of berry notes, you get raspberry, dark cherry, but there's also smoke and earth and vanilla and sort of this tea leaf, and the finish goes on forever. It fills your mouth, yet it's nice and acidic, medium tannin. I'm so thrilled to show you a New World wine that fits so perfectly into this pack and shows you how the New World can make a restrained wine that's still really, really delicious. Mushroom risottos or pastas, herb roasted tenderloin, roasted chicken in you know toasted spice butternut squash all of that is going to go fantastically well with this very versatile wine amazing 
This wine is the Primo from Bodegas Chiquiti in Mendoza, Argentina. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. And I know you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, isn't Argentina Malbec? Why aren't you giving me a Malbec? Well, listen, for a long time, I did not like the Cabernets of Argentina, but I'm telling you this style is a real kind of bellwether of the change that's going on, that they can create Cabernet that both has this very fresh, acidity and yet new world fruit. This is a perfect example of that. And this wine is mainly from two very excellent regions of the Mendoza Valley, Valadoco and Tupongato, where you have lovely sun exposure during the day to really ripen the fruit. And then at night it gets cool, so you have great acidity. The wine is made from Jose Antonio Chiquiti. He founded Bodegas Chiquiti in 1982 in Mendoza. His grandfather was an Italian vintner who immigrated to Argentina in the early 19th century. Very tied to the land. All estate fruit, low yield, hand picked, native yeast, so only what's in the vineyard. Unfiltered, unfined, a great representation of what is in the vineyard itself. The color shows that sun-kissed fruit. It's kind of purple, maroon. It's lighter around the edges. That's always what you get in Cabernet Sauvignon, but very deep and dark in the center. Give it a swirl and a sniff. I mean, this wine has so much character. You're gonna get mint. You might get some licorice off of it. Forest, woods. And then on the second sniff, that fruit comes out. Black currant, blackberry, black plum. You get a little bit of vanilla, maybe some cinnamon spice on this. Okay, let's taste it. I mean, at first, you might think that this wine's gonna be a major fruit bomb, but the surprise and the awesome thing about this wine is its contrast. So there is a lot of fruit, but at the same time, there's a sense of restraint. It's a little bit woodsy, it's a bit smoky. You're gonna get some great tannin, but not too much. Lovely acidity. Keeping this wine simple and fresh, it's a weeknight sipper. It's gonna go really well with lentils and black beans, and it's gonna go well with carne asada and hamburgers and beef stew, portobello mushrooms, all that kind of stuff. Listen, I put this in the pack to show you a new style of Argentinian Cabernet Sauvignon that has, an, has a great balance of fruit and freshness, and also to contrast with the coil, which is a little bit of a heavier style, more traditional for New World. It's a fantastic wine, I hope you love it. So we did it, we tasted these four unbelievably delicious wines, it was so hard, wasn't it? I hope that you enjoyed these wines, but that you also learned about the differences between them and how each area presents something that's both fruity and a little bit complex, such amazing wines. Please give us feedback on these wines and check back on Mondays for the next available pack.